This instructional video is going to show you the proper way to replace the chain and sprockets on a motorcycle. Over time, chains and sprockets will wear out and need to be replaced. If you wait till your front sprocket looks like this or you let your chain loosen up enough, you run the risk of becoming stranded on the trail or your chain possibly breaking and causing expensive damage. It's always important to regularly inspect and maintain your chain to help prolong the life of it. Maintenance is a big part of determining how long your chain and sprockets will last. So whenever you do decide to replace these parts, it's important to replace both the front and rear sprockets along with the chain all at the same time. Replacing one or the other could cause premature wear on your new parts. An exception to this would be if you're changing up your gearing and your chain and sprockets show very little wear. We're going to be using some standard tools along with a few specialty tools such as the Tuskmaster Link pliers and the Tusk chain press tool. We're also going to need a set of the Tusk snap ring pliers to remove the clip holding our front sprocket on. Depending on your current chain and your new chain, you may need a chain breaker and riveting tool to complete the install. And Rocky Mountain ATV MC has plenty of options for you to choose from. You're also going to need your bike's service manual for the torque specs and service limits that are specific to your bike. Today we're going to be installing a primary drive XTS front sprocket along with a primary drive aluminum rear sprocket. These sprockets are great because they're lightweight and very durable. Primary drive will usually offer a few sizes above and below your stock sizing so you can adjust your gearing to suit your specific riding needs. We're also going to be installing a primary drive gold X-ring chain and this chain is going to last a really long time with minimum adjustments and it's going to give it that great look as well. So to begin we'll start by locating the master link in the chain and then removing that retaining clip and we're using our master link pliers to do this. Go ahead and pull that clip off and you should be able to pull that side plate off as well. And one thing before you go ahead and break the chain, if your countershaft sprocket is held on by either a large nut like you see on this Yamaha or a bolt and washers like you see on this Honda, you're going to want to have your buddy go ahead and hold the rear brake while you remove that nut or bolt. Your other option is to go ahead and remove the chain and then use the counter sprocket tool. And this tool just sits over your front sprocket and allows you to either remove or install that nut or bolt holding it in place. So we'll first flatten that lock washer and then install the tool. Having that in place is going to allow us to go ahead and loosen that nut. And now we can go ahead and remove that nut, remove the tool, remove the lock washer and the sprocket. Since this bike's countershaft sprocket is held on by a retaining clip, we can continue with removing the chain. So next we can pull the rest of that master link out of the chain. And now the chain is split, so we'll go ahead and remove that chain from the bike. Next we're going to move up and remove that front sprocket. And again, this setup can look a little different on each bike, but for this bike we'll use those snap ring pliers to remove that retaining clip. From there we can go ahead and pull that sprocket off the counter shaft. And now you can really see how beat up this sprocket actually was, especially when you compare it to our new sprocket. So you're going to want to keep an eye on your chain and sprockets and replace them long before they get anywhere close to being this worn down. We're going to go ahead and clean up that counter shaft area before we go ahead and install the new sprocket. So now that we have that sprocket slid on all the way, we're going to go ahead and reinstall that retaining clip back onto the counter shaft and it's important to make sure it seats all the way into the groove. Alright, so now our new front sprocket's installed, we're going to move back to the tire and wheel and with it still on the bike we're going to loosen up the sprocket nuts on the back side. It's a lot easier to do with it still on the bike. You want to be careful not to slip off and scrape your knuckles on the sprocket. We're just going to break each of those loose then go ahead and loosen that axle nut and remove the rear tire from the bike. Alright, so now we've got our tire up on our stand. We're going to use an Allen head T-handle and an open end wrench to remove that sprocket hardware. Gonna go ahead and remove all six of those bolts. And once you've done that, we can go ahead and pull that old sprocket from the hub. And again, you can see how beat up the sprocket set was. So we've got our new rear sprocket, and we've also got a new rear sprocket bolt and nut kit from Primary Drive. So before we install our new sprocket, we're gonna want to clean up the hub using a little contact cleaner and a rag to do this. We can go ahead and set that new sprocket into place. And before we install our new hardware, we're going to apply a little medium strength thread locker to the threads of each of those new bolts. 
And again, this is just medium strength thread locker. It's not necessary to use high strength on these bolts. So next we'll install one of those sprocket bolts through each one of the sprocket mounting holes through the hub. Then we'll install a washer and thread a nut onto the back side. And to tighten these down, we're first going to snug them down with the ratchet and our open end wrench. And then we'll continue to tighten down but we'll do it in a star pattern. Doing this will make sure that the sprocket gets tightened down evenly. And after we have them all pretty well tight, we're just going to go ahead and throw a torque wrench on them to finish the job. We're going to tighten these down to 25 foot-pounds. You can refer to your service manual for your bike's recommended torque. And now's a great time to inspect your chain slider and chain rollers. As you can see, these are in pretty rough shape, so we've got all new parts and we'll go ahead and replace these. Make sure you inspect your slider closely. A lot of times most of the wear will be right in front under the swing arm and you don't want the chain to start rubbing into the swing arm. Go ahead and reinstall that tire and wheel back onto the bike. And then we've got our new chain and it's ready to be installed. You can see that this is an X-ring chain which means it has special O-rings between the inner links and the outer links of the chain. These O-rings help to keep dirt and water out of the rollers and pins inside the chain which greatly extends the life of the chain. So now we can go ahead and throw that chain onto the bike. Align it with the rear sprocket first and then we'll run it up around that front sprocket. Once you have it ran around there, we'll slide it through that chain guide and then back up around the rear sprocket. And as you can see, this chain doesn't quite reach back to itself. So to get it over that last tooth, we'll simply use our chain adjusters. So we'll go ahead and loosen the jam nut on each adjuster and then we're going to run that adjuster bolt in a couple turns to slide the axle forward. And it's important that you adjust both sides exactly the same. If they get mixed up at all, use the marks on your axle blocks and the swing arm to get them sitting perfectly even again. Now we can move that chain together and it's now ready for the master link. Since this chain is an O-ring type chain, we'll need to install an O-ring onto each pin of the master link prior to installing it. Once it's through the inner links and rollers, the other O-rings will follow, along with the outer plate and finally the clip. Now we'll go ahead and install that master link onto the chain. When you slide it through, go ahead and install those two O-rings, one onto each pin, and then the outer link plate will go on next. Most master links, especially the X-ring and O-ring links, use a tight fitting side plate that needs to be pressed onto the pins before the retaining clip can be installed. Some people use a pair of vice grips to slowly work the plate onto the pins, but it can be frustrating and time consuming. So today we're going to show you how to use the Tusk chain press tool and make this job an easy task. So we'll go ahead and install that tool onto our chain. Then we'll just snug down those two outer bolts. And after that, we can slowly tighten that center bolt to press that outer plate onto the link pins. You only need to tighten it just far enough to allow you to install that master link clip. You also want to watch your O-rings if your chain is equipped with them. The side plate should just barely start to compress those and you can kind of gauge that by looking at the other links of the chain. Now that we have it pressed on far enough, we'll go ahead and back that center bolt off and then remove the tool from the chain. So next we're going to install our master link clip and with the master link on the top length of the chain you want to install the clip at the open end towards the rear end of the bike or facing away from the direction of rotation. We do this to prevent the clip from accidentally popping off if it were to get caught up on something when running around the sprockets or through your chain guide. So we're using the Tusk master link pliers which make installing this clip an easy task. Go ahead and make sure that clip is all the way seated into its groove and now our chain is installed. So the last thing we need to do is adjust the amount of slack in our chain. This process and these specs will slightly vary with each bike, so you want to refer to your service manual. But this is usually measured close to the back edge of the chain slider, so approximately the middle of the chain. And you'll just pull up on the chain as far as you can and then measure the distance from the chain to the swing arm. For most bikes, they're going to ask for something close to 48 to 58 millimeters, or 1.9 to 2.3 inches of slack in the chain. If your chain is outside that specified amount of slack, adjust it using your chain adjusters making sure you repeat each alteration exactly for both sides. 
Once you've done that, tighten down the jam nuts on your adjusters and then torque down your axle nut and you're ready to ride. If you have any questions about replacing these final drive parts on your machine, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-336-5437. You can also visit our website www.rockymountainatvmc.com where you can read customer reviews, find more information about the parts and drive tools we carry for your machine, and watch other instructional and product spotlight videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out on the trail.